What's going on guys? Alex with 814 ADC and today I'm ready to do my full review on the Devo Knives Growler Prototype. So I've had this in for about two and a half weeks or so and I absolutely love this knife guys. Um, it's a budget knife from Devo and if you're not familiar with Devo it is a brand between Kevin over at Left EDC and um, Colin over at Colin, or Colin Mason Pierre from CM Knife Designs. Uh, some of his designs include the Kubi Royal, the Kubi Hide. Uh, he has a couple with Kubi, and he has a couple, one or two with, uh, or one with Beztech, and then one with um, Tucson, I believe. But they teamed up. They created the uh, Devo Knives brand. You guys might know them a little bit better for the Devo Knives Stout that I have here. Absolutely love this knife, too. It's one of my favorites already. Um, great, great knife. My full review will be coming on that at a later date but this is the growler prototype and this is a budget knife that they are coming out with and it is going to be a white mountain knives exclusive um and i think for the price the materials everything like that action this thing is just phenomenal guys it it has really exceeded my expectations uh, if you caught the unboxing of this knife i mentioned how i was really really excited for this one ever since i saw uh kevin shoot some of the prototype pictures or like the um the renderings in the group chat that we're in and uh you know we all chatted about it for a bit and i've just i've really been excited for it um you know for one it being a budget model it's a little easier a little more accessible to get and i just i really like the overall design of it i really liked you know everything about it and uh the prototype has really exceeded my expectations and I, I can't wait to get the um or for the you know production run to get here uh should be i think sometime end of october november somewhere in there i think kevin said pretty much plan on november but he said don't rule out the end of october from what i've heard um if you look here on the white mountain knives website which i will leave linked down below to the growler um it says the drop date is to be announced, so nothing is out yet currently on it, but um, keep your eyes peeled for it. Go check out Devo Knives Instagram, which I'll leave linked down below too. So jumping into materials. So the prototype is in D2 steel, but these are going to be coming in 14C28N, which is at this point in time, my favorite budget steel. Um, it you know holds a really good edge. It, it gets really, really sharp, and I have always had... Um, good experiences with it so I, I think that's a great choice for uh, the price point that they're going with uh, it did come with a little thing in the package um, it's addressed to nick so i don't know if nick um i think stoss's first name is nick i'm either thinking of him or uh, nick shabazz but i think it was stoss of 23 um, i think his first name is nick but uh again this is the devo growler um, these are being made by Shielden, which is my, this is my first experience with them. Uh, they are a budget brand and, uh, I've always, you know, seen some of the reviewers that I, um, you know, some of my buddies in the community, uh, check them out and stuff like that, but I've never got my hands on one until, uh, this is technically a Devo knife, but it is made by Shielden. So until now, this is the first one that I've handled. Um, it's obviously in black micarta. Uh, this is in satin, but they are going to be coming out, according to the website, there is a satin um, a satin blade, a black wash blade, and a stone wash blade. So there is a variety of them. Uh, you know, if you're a satin guy, you can have that satin. If you're a black wash guy, you can have it. And if you're a stone wash guy, you can have it. So, um, you know, quite the variety for it. Um, so some of the changes so far, I'm assuming Nick was probably one of the first ones to get these. Uh, so I'm, I'm down the list on them. I'm sure Kevin has made, Kevin and Colin have made some changes to them now, or some more changes to them now, I should say, but, um, some changes so far as of when this went out, uh, they are going to chamfer and, uh, contour the edges. They're going to make a D shaped pivot. Uh, the clip is going to be reversible. There is going to be a more even grind, uh, to the blade. A better plunge guide will also be added to the blade, uh, and there will be better lock bar access to the liner lock. So those are the changes that they had made when they sent out the prototypes. Like I said, um, I'm sure Kevin and Colin have, you know, now that they've handled these, now that they've gotten feedback from reviewers, there's probably going to be more stuff that is going to be changed with them. But as of right now, I don't, you know, technically, you know, truthfully know what those rest of those changes are. 
But uh, yeah, jumping in, you know, containing lift materials. So you have black micarta. All three variants with the satin, the black wash, and the stone wash will all have black micarta. So it's standard across the board. You have a loop over style deep carry clip here that doesn't go to the butt end of the knife, but it, it you know, takes up most of the knife in the pocket. And that will be reversible. That's one of the changes they're making. You do have a small lanyard hole back here for you lanyard fans out there. The I don't know if this is how... I'm trying to click on one of the pictures on the website, but um, you do have a Devo Knives logo on the pivot there, which is what they have been doing uh, on their... That's what they did on the Stout. That's what they're doing on here. And I think that's what they're doing on the Buzz, which the pre-order is coming up here um, this upcoming Saturday from when this video goes live. But I don't know if the logo is supposed to be like this or if it should be up and down with, um, you know, how the knife looks here. Yeah, I think whoever, someone must have disassembled this knife and not put the pivot the right way because on the website it is showing the pivot, um, you know, is rotated to line up with the lines of the body of the knife here. So um, that could just be someone that this, you know, disassembled it uh, and just forgot to line it up correctly. Or maybe that's where the D-shaped pivot's gonna come into play. But yeah, it's a really, really thin knife overall, um, which I really, really like. It's very comfortable in the hand. You have a hole for deployment here. You have a very beautiful, it's almost like a drop point, spear point style blade with a ton of belly. It's, I mean, there is a lot of cutting space right here. Comes down to a very, very thin edge, you guys can see. Um, and there is a little bit of stock up here, so it's not like it's like some, you know, razor thin stock, but it, it just... With that much belly, it gives it so much time and so much space to come down to a very, very thin edge, which I love. Uh, you have a very um, generous forward finger choil here that is kind of 65-35 um, with the blade and the handle ratio there. Uh, as you can see, it is a liner lock, which the liners are inset into the handles, which I love. Um, it makes a budget knife feel that much more premium, in my opinion. Um, there is... One small cutout on the lock bar side, probably for some lock bar relief, um, but there's no milling at all. But I really, truthfully, don't think this knife needs it. Uh, the micarta uh, and how thin everything is makes it feel very, very lightweight to begin with. Um, so, you know, some milling would maybe make it a little bit lighter, um, and, and the lighter the better, in my opinion. Um, but I don't think it's necessary to add anything to this knife just because of, you know, how lightweight it is. But um, some lock bar access will be added here. I honestly didn't have much of an issue with the lock bar access. Kind of just shoved my thumb in there and it dropped. Um, that was never anything that pop, you know, popped into my head um, that I wanted to critique. But, uh, you know, some more lock bar access certainly isn't bad. So I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, it's on bearings, of course. And I believe that is all. Uh, you do have a backspacer back here. So, um, yeah. So that's all for materials. So next up is action. And the action on this thing is really, really good, guys. Um, the middle finger flick just absolutely pops out of there. It feels so good flying out of there. Thumb flick, not as intuitive. Um, so, you know, you kind of have to put your finger on the right spot to get it to pop out of there. You can easily kind of, you know, not get enough pressure. But uh, once you get into it and once you get used to fidgeting with it, it's not going to be an issue at all. Um, but the middle finger flick, in my opinion, is where it's out for this knife. It is just money. The detent uh, shielding did a phenomenal job with getting a good, satisfying detent. Just pops right out of there. And you can see um, the blade just drops my nail. I barely even have to move the knife. Just a little bit to get it to swing close. Um, you know, it's very, very controllable, which is very satisfying, in my opinion. I love knives like this. You know, having a guillotine drop shutter, um, drop shutty knife is going to, you know, always be fun too. But, you know, most of the time I honestly prefer a just nice controllable drop because it kind of adds a little bit more of an element to the knife. Um, but it's it's so smooth. Obviously, you know, I'm not the first person to get this knife. So it's, it's you know, been around, it's been used, it's been flicked. So it's well worn in. But uh, as I've mentioned before on videos... I kind of like that because it makes the knife feel um, a little bit more your knife, kind of like your knife, if I'm if that makes any sense. Um, but you know the action is very very good. Any blade play, not much, a little bit of blade play, just a tiny bit, but not much at all. Um, for the most part, it's you know locked up solid, ready to go. So action is phenomenal. Next up is Ergos. 
And guys, this thing is an ergonomic beast. Um, you have that choil up here. You have kind of a little bit of a hump going on here. It kind of comes to a peak and then it tapers back down off. And you, you kind of have a little bit of a hump here, but it's pretty much straight across. Um, so without using the choil, I can get all four fingers here on the knife. Uh, it's still comfortable, but you know, 10 times out of 10, I'm going to choke up here and I'm going to utilize that choil and it just melts into the hand, guys. Um, you have no jimping up, up top here, which, you know, I don't think it's a huge deal. I don't think you necessar necessarily need jimping. Uh, you have, you know, the blade stock is thick enough to where it gives you a nice landing point. You can choke back here. You can, you know, extend the whole way out depending on how big your hands are and what type of grip you want to go in. Um, but anyway, you know, anywhere your thumb lands on here on the spine, it's so comfortable. Um, the micarta has a nice, you know, kind of subtle, you know, supple, soft feel to it. Um, and there's some been obviously some oils that have gone into it from other people's hands. But again, that makes it feel more, you know, obviously it makes it feel more used, but it makes it feel more um, like your own knife. If that, hopefully you, you guys are understanding that. Um, but just melts into the hand. You can do some very, very controllable cuts with this. Um, you know, any, again, even choke back, it's comfortable, but most of the time, everybody that I know is going to re be reaching up into that choil and is going to be very, very comfortable with how, um, they, you know, are using this in any sort of saber grip. Um, you can even use it in a hammer grip if you're doing some strong push cuts, um, reverses hammer grip, I think. Um, if you're going to be doing some Saturday night gas station fights with Kevin over a Slurpee at the 7-Eleven, that's comfortable too. So all around. You know, everything, I think even said on here, they're going to, um, they're going to chamfer and control the edges a little bit more. So I'm assuming maybe like up here, kind of how, it, you know, it's more of a hard edge and down here, how they're more of a hard edge. Um, but honestly, like they could give me this knife right now. Oh, I have my window cracked because it's a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. It's probably one of our last nice days. It's like 70 out. Um, my grandpa is doing some siding work down in his house because he lives like, 400 feet just down um, from where we built our new house. But so hopefully you guys are not able to hear the saw, but if you are, that's what it is. So, um, but if they were to sell me this knife right off the bat um, as a production model, I would have no issues with it because it is that comfortable uh, and chamfering it and contouring it, con contouring it, excuse me, um, is just gonna make it that much more comfortable. So I can't wait to see how the production model feels when I get mine in and um, how that much more ergonomic it's going to be. So ergos are fantastic. Next up is carry. The pocket clip from Shielden works very, very well. Um, it's not a super deep carry, but it works very well. You have a little bit sticking up out. It doesn't really bother me that much. Um, in the micarta, it just lets you, you know, slide in and out very easily. It's not the most, you know, the, the pocket clip doesn't have the most tension that I've ever felt from a pocket clip, but that doesn't bother me. I've, you know, haven't had any issue with it sliding out of my jeans, out of my shorts, um, anything like that, you know, you oh, I almost dropped it, pop it down in, this is all smooth. Uh, and then if they, you know, chamfer everything and make it a little bit more rounded off, it's going to be that much more comfortable sitting in your pocket. So you can, you know, go up and down it. If you happen to get, you know, I always use like change, chapstick, stuff like that. Uh, as an example, if you're, you know, sticking your hand down in, you don't want to have any flipper tabs potentially sticking out. Um, even if you do have a flipper only knife, you don't want it to have, you know, heavy, heavy jimping. So, um, um, it's very comfortable. Carried it in my back right pocket, my shorts, very comfortable. Um, I've tossed this in gym shorts numerous times when I was going on walks around the property with my dog, or if I've just been chilling around the house, um, watching some football. Um, it's been tossed in the shorts a couple times and the lightweightness makes a very, you know, nice gym shorts carry. Um, sometimes I just toss it in the pocket. Sometimes I actually use a pot clip. Um, but both ways they worked very, very good. So, um, and you have the reversible pocket clip coming to the production model i'm assuming there's going to be a filler tab over here um, and that'll work very very well too for you lefties out there but um carry is very very good so that leads me to my final category of price point and would i recommend this knife guys i would recommend this knife 12 times out of 10. Um, i absolutely love it and i think for the price um, of 85 dollars on white mountain knives again i will leave a link to the uh to the growler um, page on white mountain knives i try to find it or I'll try to send it, um, send it. I'll try to add it, excuse me, to where it brings up all three. Um, but if I can't figure out, or if I won't do that, I will link to the satin. But again, there will be a stone washed, a black washed, and a satin version. Uh, and they're all going to be $85, all 14C28N, all black micarta. 
um, you're just choosing the blade finish on here. And, and I think it's it's a great price because you know you're taking the $85 base price, um, and if you use uh, Kevin, you know Lefty Ten, um, you know some other YouTubers have uh, White Mountain Knives codes. I always use Kevin just because it's you know I just always want to support him, and he's always the first one that pops into my head. So if you take his code, get you 10% off. So um, it'll drop it down to it'll take what eight dollars and fifty cents off. So it'll be like a seventy, like a seventy-six dollar knife with free shipping, and and that's just a very very good deal. You're getting really nice micarta, 14C 28N, which is a fantastic budget blade steel in my opinion. Uh, inset liner lock or a liner lock with inset scales or inset, a liner lock with inset liners. I cannot talk today, guys. I apologize. A loop over style deep carry clip that is going to be reversible for lefties out there. Just a great action. Very, very fun to fidget with. A very usable blade. I mean, you have all that belly. Um, comes down to a very nice, fine, thin edge. Um, very ergonomic in the hand. Choked back, choked up. Any way you hold it, this thing is just going to melt into it. Um, and this this grip especially is just out of this world comfortable. So, um, you know, action, fit and finish, all that. Shielding, I think, killed the prototypes and knocked them out of the park. Um, and I can't wait to see what the production versions feel like in um, both scale-wise, fit and finish-wise, and action-wise. So uh, I just, I really do think this is a great knife. I think a lot of people are going to be on board with this. Because the Stout was a $300 knife, um, a little bit under 300 it was like 280 Because the Buzz is like a $300 knife, um, they have all these, you know, high-end models that they're coming out with. Um, it'll be nice for people that, you know, necessarily can't afford or don't want to jump up to that price point, but likes their designs, that they can maybe get on here with the budget floor um, at the $85 mark. And like I said, it's going to be even less if you use Lefty 10. I'm just plugging Kev today. But, um, you know, fantastic knife. I'm very, very happy I got to check it out. And I'm definitely going to be ordering one as soon as they drop. Uh, I don't know if I want the satin, the black wash, or the stone wash. Um, I really like the satin, but I might go stone wash. Always appeals to me because it, it, it hides scratches a little bit better. Um, but also the black wash might be cool too because it, you know, black micarta, black pot clip, black hardware, all that uh, might look good too. So hopefully they announce the drop date soon. I, I think they're just waiting on production to be finished up with Shielden and then they're going to get sent to White Mountain Knives. But again, Devo Knives will be linked down below. Please go check them out. The link to the Growlers on White Mountain Knives will be linked down below. Please go check them out. And also don't forget, I always leave a link to Blue Creek Knives. Um, if you guys are interested from anything from their site, please, I can't talk. Please use code 814EDC for 10% off of your purchase. I get a little kickback. Helps you guys out. Helps everybody out. So, um, yeah. That's all I have to say today, guys. Um, that was my full review on the Devo Knives Growler prototype. It absolutely just beautiful budget edc knife um and i'm so happy you got to check it out so happy for kevin and colin i think they're you know i think they're killing the game right now and uh, i keep joking to kev that i'm gonna have a little devo um, collection i'm gonna have to get like another um, knife storage case just because you know everything that i've seen from them design wise looks awesome i mean i love the stout i love the growler um the buzz pre-order that's coming out or um coming up soon this saturday um saturday october 15th is going to be a killer. I absolutely love that design. Um, I think they have the mash, which looks really good. They have a slip joint coming down the line. They, have, they or they at least used to. I don't know if they still do or not, but um, I did see something a while ago that they have a prototype maybe coming of that. Everything that they have so far, I'm just loving, um, and I'm happy for their success. So hopefully, their success just you know is on an upward trend, um, and it just keeps getting better and better because I will always be a supporter, um, and I can't wait to buy more of their knives. So. Like I said, guys, that was my full review on the Devo Knives Growler prototype. Please go check out the links down below to everything that I um, mentioned in the video. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your night, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.